All right, so you're comfortable with basic navigation around the editor. Now let's go ahead and take a look at working with content inside of the editor. As they say, content is king. And in the case of Unreal, without content, we just have an empty scene. So let's jump into my seven keys for working with assets in our scene. The first key is to have a scene to actually work in. With the third person starter template, you can see this playground in front of us when we first open the editor, but we'll actually wanna create our own level to start working with. To do that, go up to File, New Level, and you'll get a dialog box with a few options in it ranging from open world to a blank empty level. We wanna select basic for this exercise. This is gonna give us a bare bones level to work with that already has some lights and a sky in it. And with basic selected, we'll just go ahead and click create. Now, if you made any changes in the template level, then it's gonna ask you if you wanna save. Since we don't really wanna mess with the starter template level, click on don't save. All right, with our new level open, the second key is gonna to be to add some content. So we're gonna look at this in two different ways that we can do this. First, we're gonna click on our quick add button in the toolbar. That's the little cube with a green plus symbol on it. This is gonna give us a drop down with a lot of options. And you're gonna get very familiar with many of these options later in the full course. For now, let's go down to shapes where we can click and drag a cube into our scene. Once you drop it in, you'll see this widget with some arrows. This lets you move the object around, but we'll actually dive into that a little deeper in the next step. First, I wanna show you the second way of adding content to your scene, the content browser. Remember, we can click the little content drawer button in the lower left, or we can use the shortcut control space to bring up our content browser. I'm gonna go ahead and click on dock and layout since I'm in the content adding mindset right now. From here, let's drill down into our starter content folder and then into the props folder. In here, you'll see all sorts of props that can be added to the scene. What we're looking for right now is pretty much anything with the word static mesh at the bottom of the thumbnail and at the top of the tooltip. This is a 3D object that we can use in the scene, just like the cube we added earlier. This leads us to our third key, which is transforming assets. Just like the cube, our chair has an arrow widget on it that will let us move it around. This is called the move widget and it's part of the transform tools. If you work with any 3D modeling software, then you'll be familiar with the four tools in this set. Select, move, rotate, and scale with the corresponding shortcut keys of Q, W, E, and R. Now be sure to check out the cheat sheet below the video to help you remember those hotkeys. Now let's get back to the move tool, which can be activated with W. The move tool has three arrows, each representing a planar axis in three-dimensional space. You can click and drag on any of these arrows to move an actor along its axis, or you can click on one of the little squares to move in two axes at once. Clicking in the very middle of the widget will let you move in all three axes at once, but I find that I spend most of my time using the square to move in a two-dimensional planar axis when moving. Now, another cool thing that you can do is if you hold down shift while you're moving an object, it'll actually move the camera along with it. The next transform tool that we're gonna look at is the rotate tool, which is activated with the E shortcut. Also notice that as I change tools, the highlighted tool in the viewport toolbar changes as well. These also act as buttons if you happen to forget the hotkeys, which you won't, right? The rotate tool also has three axis control that you can rotate around. Hitting R will activate the scale tool, which you can use to manipulate the size of an object. The scale tool can be used in an individual axis, but this is one where you'll likely be using the center to scale the object uniformly most of the time. If you ever need to get granular when lining things up, you can access traditional orthographic viewports by going up to the button in the far right corner. Then you can maximize that with the same button. As an example, I'll go over here to the top viewport and maximize it. I'll then find my chair and the outliner, Hit F to focus it. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in closer. Right click and drag to move the viewport around and then move my chair to line up with the cube. I can then click the button to go back to my four up view, then maximize my perspective viewport to continue working. Now, one more quick thing to understand about transforming assets 
is world space versus local space. World space, notated by the globe symbol up here, means that no matter what the rotation, the object will always be manipulated in relation to the world. Local space, on the other hand, which we can toggle to by clicking on this button, means the manipulation of the object will be relative to the object itself. Now, as you get more comfortable with moving objects around in the viewport, you'll find yourself toggling between world and local space a lot. Now, you've probably noticed that as I've been moving, rotating, and scaling things that the adjustments are happening in a stair-step fashion. This is actually because of our fourth key, snapping. Snapping is the act of applying constraints to a transformation. For example, we can have something move 10 centimeters at a time, or we can have something move 100 centimeters at a time. And on that note, Unreal Engine uses the metric system, where one Unreal unit is equal to one centimeter. Looking up here in the viewport toolbar, we'll see the snapping options for move, rotate, and scale. For the icon on the left, you can click it to toggle it. Blue means that snapping is enabled, and gray means that it's disabled. The number on the right is the value of the snap. Clicking on this will change to a drop down so that you can change that value. Now, while you can toggle snapping off to get some good freeform control, remember that snapping is your friend when it comes to building a scene. Whether you're working on a digital set for a film or an environment for a game, snapping is one of your most valuable resources. In the industry, we call this working on the grid. Now, another cool trick with snapping is that you can hold down the V key on the keyboard to snap to a vertex on another object. This lets us do things like snap our chair to be centered on this cube. But what if my cube was rotated and I wanted my chair to be in the same orientation? That's where surface snapping comes in. By going up here to the surface snapping icon, I can turn on surface snapping. With rotate to surface normal turned on, if I hold down V, I can now snap not only to the cube's face location, but its rotation as well. Now that actually brings me to the fifth key of working with assets, grouping. Two or more objects can be simultaneously selected by holding down control or command and clicking on them. Then you can group them by hitting Control and G or Command and G on a Mac. Move them around as one, and then you can hit Shift and G to ungroup them if you need to. Now this actually ties into the number six key that I wanted to talk about, which is duplication. An object can be duplicated in the viewport by holding down Alt or Option on a Mac and then dragging it out. This is useful because it's much quicker than continuously dragging a new copy out from the content browser and it's more accurately controlled than just doing a copy and paste. Both of which you can do if you wanted to, but getting comfortable with the alt drag duplicate is going to be essential if you want to speed up your workflow. An example of using these two keys together would be adding a table with chairs around it, grouping that up, alt dragging out a copy, ungrouping it, tweaking the chairs a little bit, then grouping it back together again. Doing this, you could quickly build out an entire restaurant with subtle variations and chair placement. Now our seventh and final key is to make use of the details panel. Selecting one of our objects, if we look over at the details panel on the right, take note of the transform section. Here you'll see the location, rotation, and scale of the object represented in numerical values. This can be really useful for getting very granular with the transformation of an object, allowing you to get some very exact values. For scale, take note of the padlock icon, which allows you to toggle uniform scale on and off. With it off, you can scale a specific axis individually, and with it on, everything will scale uniformly, just like if you click the center of the scale widget. Mobility here for 3D models mostly relates to if the object is going to be moving or not. We'll cover that more in depth later in the full course. Below that, you'll see where you can actually change the static mesh. I could, for example, 
Drag out a copy of this cube, then click on the chair, where I will then click on this little folder with a magnifying glass icon to locate the chair in the content browser. By the way, you can also do this with the shortcut of Control plus B. And now if I click back on the cube, I can click this arrow in a circle icon to assign that chair to this mesh actor. Notice that the mesh changes, but it's white now instead of chrome and yellow like the other one. This is because the actor itself is the same, as you can see by the same name of cube in the outliner but we've changed the mesh that it's actually referring to, that it's actually referencing. The material is still the same basic shape material from before, just like with this other cube. Now we could actually click on the chair, use the find in browser button to locate the material, then go back to the cube that is now a chair and assign that material. And this is where the details panel lets you update individual parts of an act. You likely won't find yourself doing that exact step when you could just alt drag a copy of the chair itself out. But where this does come in really handy is when you want to change the material on something. As an example, let's navigate to the starter content architecture folder. We're gonna drag this wall 400 by 400 out into the world. And we'll go up here to change our snapping to 500 centimeters. Then we'll drag out two copies. Now go into the starter content materials folder where you'll find all kinds of material options that you can play around with assigning to these three different walls. Another quick way to change the material on something is to just drag from the content browser and drop it right on top of the model. All right, that was a big one. Go ahead and take the time to play around in the editor with some content, add some stuff from the starter content to a scene and try changing materials around a little bit. And then when you're ready, we'll start diving into lights in the next video. I'll see you there.